back is gone, and you sit down, you figure bye-bye, and then all of a sudden, you win it coming in the back door, and you walk up there and emulate your mother by knocking off the high-low jackpot for 1875. Pretty good game, you know, and that shot, boy, I'll tell you, you can play that shot so many times and never get it. Okay, now one more question. Is there going to be a high-low jackpot room added to your house now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, good luck to both of you. We'll get underway right after this. Candlepin Bowling is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware. His league average 125, high single 185, high triple 474. He had a 644 in winning his five-string roll-off. Six is the fill, and he's left with the two, four, five, and seven. Turned around as soon as he released that one and knew that he was not going to get it. Nine. Our defending champion, John Zernike, won his title last week in defeating Tim Lipke by one pin. Just a wee bit full. The averages are one pin apart. Al Johnson, 125. John Zernike, 124. That was the two pin that he wanted and just missed, and it's still there. Left side, four horsemen left, and a piece of wood that has to be picked up by our lob line judge and referee, Ralph Stewart, as it comes all the way down. But if he hadn't caught it, might have been at John's feet. Punched out the three. Al liked that one. Everything went except the five. Let's see if he gets the spare. Yes, right on. Al is a member of the 1986 Massachusetts Bowling Association Men's Open Team Champions. Fine candlepin bowler, and that was a spectacular match that he had against Tom Olsta as they tied at 398. Five is a fill here. Then they each rolled 29 in the two-box roll-off. And uh, then Tom Olsta got 20 in the next and Al as he referred to it missed the pin that he wanted and settled for had to settle for 15 a 10 as he got the 7 10 and it rolls across he's got a big grin on his face as he comes back because he didn't expect it John Zernike. Everything except the five pin. Piece of wood over on the left. He's waiting to settle down, as you can see. Now he can go. And he makes it. Spare. 
Keith Williams is keeping score on that big scoreboard today, and Bruce Goldman keeping score beside me. Here we go, and bonus. He gets seven. I mentioned it before, there he is, Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, and there's a custom spot sitting right at the lob line. Don Riley is our statistician and coordinator. Phil Rubin, our producer director. Wouldn't go. He had the one, two, eight. One and two out of there, but not the eight. It's still there. All right, first check on the scoreboard. After four in the first string. As you see our two bowlers looking at it, that's what they're looking at. Challenger, Al Johnson, Indian Orchard, Massachusetts, leading John Zernike of Webster, Malign, to roll in the fifth box of the first string. He's had two marks already. Three, nine, and ten. Wood, back of that three. Nine still there. Al is single and owns his own bar and manages it. He's representing the canal lanes in Southampton. Strike, and he knew it. He could feel that one coming. that two pins out of there the one and the nine were the only ones that went eight fourth appearance on our show for John Zernike twice in 83 and then last week. Four and six plus seven, or if you prefer four and seven over on the left, six alone on the right. Wood in front of the four seven, wood in front of the six. Didn't work, he was trying to utilize that wood. Maybe get a little bounce off the sidewall and have it come over. He's representing the Mohegan Bolodrome in Webster. John is married and has one child, daughter Tara. He works as a truck driver for Atlas Distributors. On a strike, Al Johnson rolls. All right, seven, eight, and nine. After getting three on the first ball, let's get that Part of a picket fence across the back there with a seven, eight, nine, and one piece of wood out in front. Well, he used the wood and nothing happened. He turns around as much as say, well, what do you think of that? I got nothing. It's an eight. Two, four, six, no wood. Oh, what a great try. Great try. He thought he had it. So did I when he first hit it. Ten. John Zernike, trailing by 14. Uh, 
two four seven six ten. Everything but the six. Nine. About time we had a hit on our home viewer jackpot. It's up to six hundred and fifty dollars. Our high-low jackpot is at seventy-five. Since John hit it at eighteen seventy-five, then we set it up starting again at fifty dollars for Tim Lipke, who did not get it. Strike. So it's at seventy-five. That puts John at 82, plus two bonus balls to throw. Now Al Johnson. Four, seven with a piece of wood behind and a piece of wood in front and the 10 alone over on the right. Just the seven out of there. And eight. Next week's challenger will be the man who almost won our big championship show, Peter Flynn. He lost it by three pins to Dick O'Connell. He'll be our challenger next week. Now he's set up in pretty good shape. There are three pins there, but he has the two pin, then two pieces of wood between it and the 610. Well, it went a little bit to the right, but it did not go back and get the 10. It's a nine. 112. Disappointing for him, especially starting off with a spare and actually having two spares in the first three boxes. Now John Zernike, first bonus ball on a strike. Got seven, he's left with five, eight, nine. Tough little triangle. It looks so easy, but so often you can punch out that middle one or clip one of the wings and not get all three. Nine. 99. With a mark, he can win the string. Without, of course, he loses. Well, if he's going to have a mark, it's, he's going to earn it. Four, six, ten. Wood against the 610. Can he get the action he wants? Well, he kicked it, but no. So the best he could do was 109. Give Al Johnson $50 for winning the first string. The first and only bonus money so far goes to Al Johnson, winner of the first string. No bonus money for marks in a row. As you know, three marks in a row, any combination of strikes or spears establishes $50. There it is at the end of one. Challenger Al Johnson won 12, and John Zernike won, which means our defending champion leads it off. John Zernike. Hand side, six, nine, ten, wood in front of it. Made it. diamond left plus the seven. In other words, the two, four, five, seven, and eight. Oh, he got a break. Got a break. As a piece of flying wood came and knocked down the last pin.
Challenger Al Johnson. Two full that time on the head pin, uh, one of the four pins remaining. Now he still has. Well, it winds up as a nine. Didn't like that one. Got the four horsemen left side plus the five and the eight. Yes, got delayed action and the four finally went down. Needed a little bump from a piece of wood. He got it. Eight is the fill, and now for another? No, he hit the foot foul line with that one. And it bounced a little bit left and did not get the spear. And a big hit. Wouldn't that have been nice if he had been able to make the spare? Instead of four marks in a row, he has three out of four, but not three in a row to establish the bonus of $50. Al Johnson working on a spare. Bonus. He didn't like it. And yet, look what he wound up with. An eight pin drop and a nice little spare leave of the one and two. Boy, he hit that pocket right in the heart. Seven more. And one, two, four to convert for three marks in a row. Two full on the head pin. Eight. And one more check on the scoreboard after four boxes in the uh, middle string. Right now, with a bonus ball to roll, it is Zernike 53, Johnson 50, Webster, Massachusetts, about to roll at the halfway point in the match, the fifth box of the middle string. Once again, he hit the foot foul line with the delivery and had the ball bounce and not go where he wanted it to. Nice 10. Those bounces have hurt him in filling his spares with a four that time and a five previously. One, two, seven, and ten. Piece of wood in a good spot between the two and the seven. 
Give him uh, just a little bit bigger target. But he had a split and it hit the pocket and he didn't. Getting just the one. Four horsemen right side. That's what Al Johnson faces now. Had to hit the head pin and didn't get it. So it was three and six that came out of there, but one and ten remain. Nine box. It's uh, a swing around so that John Zernike leads by three now. Johnson led by three after the first. Oh, no, he didn't get the three on the right. He punched out the six and left the three and ten. It's a 10. And if you wonder why, it's because it made fair contact with a piece of felled wood, and that makes it legal. Anything that happens after it makes fair contact with something that's in play, even if it flew up above and came back down again. Here's a tough one. Four and five side by side, and across the back, seven, eight, 10. Piece of wood, agonizing sometimes, back and forth, back and forth. He wants that wood to stop anyway, I mean, even if he didn't have to wait for it, so that he can utilize it. Well, it didn't work, but I don't blame him for trying it, especially when you had parallel pins in the four and five, seven and eight, nine. Still has five and seven. Nope. Ten. Johnson, two full. Five pins still there. Object pin becomes the three as he has three, six, ten on the right, seven and eight on the left. Once again, he did the same thing that he's done previously when he's had three pins like that, punched out the middle one. It's so easy to do because we're talking about, you know, like an inch or so difference between hitting the pocket or punching it out. Not happy with himself that time for missing the head pin. And he has a tough lead. Four horsemen left side plus the nine pin. 
And that's what makes that a tough shot. If he has the corner pin over there, the 10, that goes. But by splitting the one and two, one piece of wood went on one side of it, and the two pin went on the other. Three pins right now separating them, just as it was the case after the first string. Strike for John Zernike. The difference, of course, being that the lead has changed. Now John Zernike putting more pressure on. John did not like that delivery. He got six, but he has parallel pins almost. Well, he has actually he has the three, then the four, five, six, and the seven. And the six pin's still there, so it's a nine. And this for a 10, he has it. And that is exactly his average, 124. Now Al Johnson at 89. He wants at least one mark here. Mmm, tough. Four and ten. Wood alongside the four and a couple of pieces of wood on the deck. What he wants to do, if he can, is get somewhere in the high teens by getting a mark here. And then a good fill. Oh, not that way, as he punches out and gets a half Worcester right. Three and nine out of there. an eight, and he winds up with a 107. John Zernike wins the middle string and picks up the only bonus money we've given away so far. $50 to the winner of the first string, $50 to the winner of the second string. The lead has changed, and John Zernike, our defending champion, now in the lead after two over challenger Al Johnson, 233 to 219. Maybe a spare here. He has three pins in a triangle made up of the four, seven, and eight, but he has wood in front of it, which may help to make this target a little bit bigger. Oh, he wanted to hit it on the right side of the red line, but he went too far right. What Al has to be concerned about now is not getting discouraged. Is it going to go? No. The four pin's still there, and the reason it's there is because the piece of live felled wood in back of it is holding it up. But it is an excellent opportunity for a spear. And he has it. <laughs> Defending champion, John Zernike. Up by 14. And he punches out on the left side. Right down the slot, touching nothing. Still six pins there. So it is an eight. Four horsemen left side. 
And in addition, he has the six pin over on the right and in the back, the eight and the ten. One, six, and ten still there. Eight. got everything down except the kingpin, the five. Good fill of nine on his spear. And another? Yes. And a chance right now for three marks in a row or $50 in bonus money. He's got it. $50 in bonus money. But more important, putting the pressure on. John Zernike leading by 14 coming in. No help. And it's an old Woolworth, five and ten. Yeah. Made it. That was sidewall. Sidewall bounce. strike on top of that. So Al puts together three in a row and John comes back with two in a row. Al is still alive right now. After establishing that bonus of three in a row, now each consecutive mark is worth $50. And he has, is it gonna go? Oh, he couldn't get the strike, but he does have a single pin. Got a nice nine fill and he has the 10 to pick up. Yes. All right, make that four in a row. Give him another $50 in bonus money. Uh, he's gonna have to earn it this time now. He's got a seven. But the pins that are standing are the six, seven, and 10. Or if you prefer, seven alone over on the left with wood, six and 10 on the right. Ooh, he flew that ball over. And it dropped in the pit right behind the six and 10. So the bonus streak stops right there. This is for a 10, and he's got it. So he's already at 92 right now, and this is a more typical string for Al Johnson, sometimes referred to as Alfie. John Zernike gets seven on the first ball. Now he's got that triangle. This time it's made up of the three, five, six. Can he make it? And the lob cost him. It cost him a spare. Cost him uh, three more pins and a spare. But the ball actually flew out there and made contact first beyond the lob line, and that's what the lob line judge's task is, sometimes unpleasant. Yeah. So close, because he has empathy, Ralph does. Too bad. It's too bad it had to be such an important ball that, that he lobbed. Al Johnson gets himself a seven pin drop and a chance for another mark with three pins over on the right and their diagonal, which is easier than triangular. 
Or is it? As the six pin didn't go, the three and ten went. It's a nine. Now he has a spare leaf. And he made it. Al Johnson leading in the match by eight pins right now through completed frames. And he has a nine and a spare up on the board. Now, John Zernicke. Two of them fell. Now he has a chance for a spare. All right. Spare in the seventh, and he's opposite a nine. Trailing in the match by eight at the moment. Well, actually, by seven because he's opposite a nine box. He leads by two at the moment. And he has a single pin. He made it. Two very big clutch spares for John Zernicke. Just two pins separating our bowlers, each now working on a spare in the eighth. Al Johnson first. And Al gets himself a big nine. He's got the nine pin in the back. There's a piece of wood almost perpendicular to it, another one horizontal out front. Let's see whether he can get it. Yes. So he has a spare now in the ninth. Thin hit. Just three. Four horsemen left. Five and eight with it, and the ten over on the right. And no, he did not mark. He has the eight and ten. It's a nine. One twenty eight would tie it for uh, one twenty eight would tie it for John Zernicke. He is already at ninety nine. The bonus ball to roll. He gets a thin hit. He gets three for a fill. Right now. Four pin lead for Al. Al Johnson leading by four. No, didn't get it. He has to mark. He has to mark. All right, he needs a mark and eight to tie, nine to win. Spare leave. Not an easy one, but he has the three, six, ten over on the right. That did it. Al Johnson has won. Right. 
So, unfortunately for John Zernike, he had an extremely costly lob. Tremendously costly. And as a result, he lost by eight pins. Al Johnson is our new champion, 361 to 353. $50 in our home viewer jackpot, and this thing is getting a little bit heavy and full. I would like to see somebody hit it because, as we've told you before, just as soon as we have somebody hit this thing, then we empty the barrel and start all over again. I guess all of you know by now that these are guesses as to what the total pinfall would be. Both bowlers combined, all these folks in here, hoping that I will draw a card that will have something that will be within 10, either way, of what the total is. And you know the total today is 714. That means anywhere from 704 to... Uh, 724 will win the $650. If we don't have one, then we'll add $50, and next week we'll be working on $700. Again, I remind you of the address, and one postcard, and always a postcard, and one per day. Send it, please, along to Camelton Bowling, WCVB-TV, 5 TV Place, Needham, Massachusetts, zip code number 02192. And let's see who we have. Anywhere from 704 to 724 for $650. Go way over in the corner here somewhere. All right, this one is from Ann Pye, Crystal Street, Webster, Massachusetts. We're going to have a bigger one next week. 775 is the guess. <laughs> so it's going to be $700. All right, Al. John wiped it out last week, so we're going to get 75 bucks there for you to take a shot at. <laughs> Not bad, but I can't give you 50. No. <laughs> Two-thirds of it, no. <laughs> Hot. Oh, you only, you only do it when it's worth a lot of money, huh? I see. Can't get interested in it otherwise. All right. John, I know that you are going to be thinking about that lob. And that was a very, very costly lob, as we know. I hate to see if a guy, first of all, you know, if, if you lob, you feel bad. I feel bad for two people. I feel bad for the bowler. I also feel bad for Ralph, who has to call it at that particular moment, because he's a bowler himself, right. and he knows how important it is. And right. it's like, but it would have to be such an important one. It was going to be a spare. And it probably cost you about 12 pins. Yeah, about that. Oh, well, huh? Oh, well, well not too much to out of pins. So. Well, I know, but you, you did have a, a lot of fun, and you sat there thinking you had lost last week, and then you know what? all of a sudden, there you were. Okay. Let me see, what do we have for you? Well, we have the, the smaller version this time. You can keep the big one for yourself and give your daughter Tara the little one, huh? Yeah, I'll give it to her. <laughs> She'll be up here soon. You think so, huh? Oh, yeah. Do you teach her? Not yet. No, she's she pretty young. How old is she? Uh, she was a year, let's see, about a month ago. Uh huh. Okay. And uh, let's see, we have uh, three hundred dollars for you, and I can only find fifty dollars in bonus money. Is that it's right? All. all right. Come back and see us Thank again. You. All right. Don't Thank you. Al, this is a lot better than losing in a double overtime, huh? Yeah, a lot better. You were making some awful faces there near the end. I, like you felt like ah, I'm not hitting this thing. I'm getting disgusted with myself, huh? Yeah. Well, I thought I made some cuts that went, but uh, not to they be didn't so. go. So. $700 plus $200 in bonus money, $50 gift, gift certificate from True Value Hardware Stores for having the most marks, a trophy from Ace Trophy, and the pleasure of being greeted by Peter Flynn next week. Yeah, okay. That should be a blast. <laughs> <Yeah>. oh, <geez. laughs> Good luck. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody.